Hey guys and welcome back to another YouTube video. In this video I'll be going through the GWS vs Western Bulldogs AFL game from round 8, going through who went really well, who struggled I guess, I mean not many team, not many players struggled as we saw a combined 3300 AFL fantasy point score which is quite a large amount and we saw a couple of top names absolutely top out and smash it so before we get into the video remember to like and subscribe, turn the notification bell on so you know when I upload and let's get into the video. So, wait a second, there we go. Um, so, Tom Green for GWS absolutely smashed it. 170, including 120 through those uh, through the first and last quarter. And 25 in the other two. I mean, if he really wanted to, he could have probably gone and scored 200 here. He probably has the potential to do that. And, I mean, if we look here, did he kick all of his goals in the last quarter? Um, no, he kicked one in the first. He kicked three goals, one as well. So he might have been a midfielder who's a on-ball tackling specialist who would have had um, potentially four goals. I mean, he's been the pick of the season, averaging 120, which is second in the comp only to English. And he had 21, 17, six marks, nine tackles, three goals, one, and zero uh, negatives from the game, basically. So he's huge. Um, has a break even, I think now of, is it, is it still, is it 85 or is it 60? Like to put it into perspective, a rookie, Fergus Green has a higher break even than Tom Green at 900k. Like you saw that. Uh, here we go. One sec. Hawks. Yeah. 360k for Fergus Green and Tom Green's 900k, uh, 600k more, sorry. And he's got a better break even. Um, then you have Whitfield here back to his best i don't think so i think this is just an anomaly in the cycle and i think he goes back to an 80s sort of game but i'll happily take it if he isn't um if it isn't an anomaly as after a week he excuse me he might be a trade-in target as he's only 730k and he he's 765 now with a good break even but he'll be 800k and a good and a good role Haynes 116, I think he just gets help because um, he can easily get those chip marks from Ash, Whitfield, and Perryman, etc. Um, uh, Jelly, really good second half, uh, in particular last quarter, to basically save it. Ash, 102, don't think you can risk it with him, to be honest with you. Hogan, uh, 101, and yeah, just doing having a good key forward type of day, one goal one in that quarter. A couple of hitouts to help help him. One goal, two. One goal, three. Um, he ended up with two goals, three in the end. So he really could have put on and scored one fifteen, one twenty, um, but his inaccuracy cost him. Uh, then you have a doom with another good game. Flynn as a ruckman, just getting good points, but giving up a whole lot more. So uh, yeah, you might want to get a ruckman that plays against him. And then you got Cogs here, not a good score, going down in price a little bit. Uh, just hasn't been the player that I think we expected from him this year, as I thought he would go 110, and he's currently, what, 102? Himmelberg, just not getting the right role, and um, it looks like he finally got the right role here and had a 52-point quarter to really boost up his score. Perriman just struggling, and glad that I didn't go for him. Bedford, um, Buckley's been really good. He just has he's a key defender, so he doesn't really get much help. Uh, Callahan, I think it's almost ready to cash out on him as he's twenty EBs break even by twenty eight, going up to I believe almost five ninety k. But uh, yeah, I think he's ready to be cashed out. Isaac Cummings, a sixty four, averaging seventy odd this year, just not good enough. Um, then you have Lloyd O'Halloran. Daniels, Ward, Angwin. I think he almost he also got injured in this game, Angwin. I know he played out the game, but um, that's another concern. And the fact that he only got 24 in a full game is really, really concerning. So I'm happy that I didn't jump on him, as I just didn't like the um, his scoring potential, to be honest. Then you have Peatling, Brown, and Cabman. Then we go over to Western Bulldogs, and it was the English and Bont show. Um, English had a lowest scoring quarter of 33, and that's why he ended up with a with a 151. Absolutely huge, best player in the game at the moment, and just disappointed that I didn't start with him, but glad that I've jumped on now, 
as it's really going to make a big difference between him and Darcy now if you don't have him, as he's putting on at least 30 points a week at this point, and 30 points a week is huge, as that's almost 500 points, or, well, if we take, there's like 15 rounds to go or whatever, 15, I think it's 15, maybe even 16, there's there's 15 games left for each of them, I think, and um, if he scores 30 more in each game, that's 450 points already, which is almost a, which is almost like a fifth or a sixth of a round worth of points just gone um, because of English first Darcy. Then you have Bont here, 129, absolutely huge. 29 at his lowest, and that's just, we're starting to get the, I'm starting to get a real payout out of having him. Um, Baza Smith, 105, Liberatore, 100. And then Joe Hannison here, um, 92. He's really started to pay out the people that risk it, risked it with him. Then you got McRae here, 90. Just didn't work even with um, someone else, someone being out, I'm pretty sure. So um, who was out? Or was it just, yeah. He just didn't um, get the midfield time. Well, he did get the midfield time, just did get the score, to be honest. Daniels, 90. Ed Richards, 87. Norton, Trelaw injured, so that may help. Um, that may help McRae. I mean, he did score 20 in that quarter. What about Libba? Did he step up? No. Did Baza Smith step up? No. Did Bond? Not really. Who stepped up in the middle? Was it um, Caleb Daniel? Did he step up? No. So no one really stepped up in that quarter when Trelaw went down. Uh, in the last quarter I'm looking for and no one stepped up in the middle then you have Bailey Williams um, 26 point last quarter so a good save from him Bailey Dale again has been really disappointing Gardner good um, season debut Scott Baker Baker's been Baker's definitely one that you should jump off of now as he's hit max price at around 550 get a rookie get him up to a 750k guy that you think can leapfrog up then you have Lobb, Jones, um, Dre, uh, Dre um, Ugo Hagen, Keith, uh, Waitman, and um, now what is that next to Waitman? I don't know what that um, is referring to next to Waitman, but um, clearly maybe maybe it's like ice cold or something like that, as he only really had. Um, he got a lot of his score out of he got twelve of his thirty one out of a. Uh, mark and set shot goal and then another six out of another mark and kick so he's got an 18 of his 31 from those two so yeah he just was so limited in the game but um, that's the review of the GWS first Western Bulldog game in which we saw two guys go over 150 and um, four guys go over 129 oh I should say 128 if you're saying overs 120 28 um and we saw also one two three four five six seven eight nine ten ten guys go 100 plus which is absolutely huge numbers and yeah just ended up being a three uh three thousand three hundred and like thirty odds a for fancy points game which is huge compared to normally i think it's around three thousand so to see almost a ten percent increase is pretty big but that's the video there and i'll see you guys in what shouldn't have been the last um, AFL recap of the round, but it will be in the um, other Saturday night game between, who was it, Fremantle and Hawks. So I'll see you then. Bye, guys. Goodbye.